Last week, Ilya Sorokin was one of the hottest goaltenders in the league. And then the Rangers had a couple days off. I- I- Igor Sesterkin got beat up a little bit versus Calgary, and his numbers are still great. So here's the, but then Sister, uh, Sorokin gets his, or sorry, Sesterkin gets his first shutout against Columbus. Sorokin gets the loss against um, uh, uh, Nashville. But there's still this budding rivalry from these two BFFs. Now, I'm going to start with you, Anthony. Is a and the key word right there is friendly rivalry. Yeah. Is a friendly rivalry between those two uh, friends good for New York hockey? I mean, yeah, I think. I mean, if this was bar talk, I would I would buy everyone around on that one. Um, you know, I, I think I think it absolutely is. I mean, listen, they they both play for um, for New York teams. Uh, they obviously want to be the, the best goalie in the area. They want their team to be better than the other. Um, and I think the fact that their friends just kind of adds, you know, fuel to that fire. You know, they want, they want the bragging rights when they're hanging out in the summer, you know, in Russia, um, you know, they can, you know, little take little uh, jabs at each other about, you know, who had the better GAA or, you know, that, that kind of stuff or which team had the most success. So um, I think it absolutely is. I think, I think these two um, are going to be, at the top of the uh, top of the league as soon as possibly, you know, this year in a lot of the statistical categories, um, you, you see, you see the immense talent that they have um, very, I mean, different, very different goalies too. I think they play different styles and they have some similarities, but they also are very different. But um, you know, these are two guys that, you know, in the summertime, you see them in Russia, there's pictures of them together training, uh, from years back, there was like a, I, I'm pretty sure Phil's seen it. It was like a, a Twitter video of they were like somewhere in Russia and they were like singing like a boy band song together and like yeah. outside somewhere. Um, and, you know, and it's, it's, so it's good. It's good to see they have that bond. Um, you know, they, they came up with each other, you know, they, they played in a similar situation, Rangers Islanders, you know, they were, one was CSKA Moscow, the SKA Petersburg. They played against each other, two of the top teams in the league. Um, so you know, hopefully they can bring that to the NHL level this time. So, yeah, I, I think it's great that they're, that they're good friends. Um, I think it's going to push them both to, like I said earlier, to be better than the other, uh, bragging rights. And you know, again, the, these guys, maybe, maybe not this Olympics, cause you still have, you know, the Vaseline man, as I call him at the, you know, top of his game and a bounce back season from Bobrovsky, but maybe in the future going forward, these two guys can, you know, represent Russia, um, uh, on the same roster. So, you know, I, I just want to say, cause I just turned around and went the Vaseline man. I'm like, is that a good, um, nickname to ever have? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but going, going over to Phil, because by the way, the hard part is at least you didn't just do a uh, AV 88 or something like that. Because eventually when we get the Paul George, it's PG 13. One of the lamest nicknames there ever is. Phil, what do you think about the rivalry? Is it friendly, uh, good for the NHL, or good for New York hockey? It, I mean, the way that I think about it, and I think I posted this in the group text, is <laughs> that it, it's sort of like Crosby and Ovechkin, but without the beef and without the grand scale that they're on. But it, 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 the media wants to make it into something more than it is, but it, it's really just two really good friends who came from the same place, the same age, same level of pedigree in terms of prospect status and are producing at the same exact level, the NHL right now, they both um, have been at every level they've ever played in. Uh, it, it's, it's great to see it. it honestly, it, it, um, Ilya Sorokin is going to be a pain in the Rangers ass for a very long time. I, I said that about John Tavares when, I was literally at the Islanders draft party with Anthony when they drafted him that day. I, I said Tavares was going to be a pain in the ass for the Rangers for a long, long time. And Sorokin is going to be as well. And and likewise with Shesterkin to the Islanders. I mean, so you're in for a goaltending duel every time the two of them are going to be playing against each other. So, yeah, it, it's great for New York hockey. It, it, it really is. All right. So – but I'm going to actually go with the word friendly right there and reference a Sports Illustrated article as well before I get started. Uh, first, let me do that, reference a Sports Illustrated article. If you remember 15 years ago, there was an article in Sports Illustrated comparing DiMaggio, or sorry, Mantle, Mays, 
and Duke Snyder to Lundquist, Brodeur, and Rick DiPietro. And then Rick DiPietro blew out his hip and just let it into the Lundquist, Brodeur rivalry. The question I have right there is Lundquist and Brodeur were not friendly, and that was still a great rivalry. Is it better when the rivals truly don't like each other, a la Crosby and Ovechkin, Lundquist, Brodeur? You know what? The Crosby and Ovechkin one is a funny thing because I think their stances on each other drastically changed over the years. I know when they were younger and they were playing each other in the playoffs a lot, it was a lot different. But I think as they've gone gotten older, and I think Crosby's matured a bit. Uh, so is Ovechkin. And, and Ovechkin, too, yeah. that, that, you know, to that extent. Uh, I, I would say that their stances on each other have definitely changed. I mean, even for a while, look at Ovechkin and Malkin were – were not exactly big fans of each other for a bit there. And and that's changed as well. So, I mean, it, it, it's good in a way that there is some real life heat, but like you want, you really want that heat in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't need to be to the level of Red Wings and Avalanche in like the mid late nineties there, but you, you definitely want a competitive edge between the two. But I, I, I like that. I like that. Ilya and Igor are, are friends. I, I think it's a really good dynamic because I think knowing, like, like let's just say me and Anthony, when, when me and Anthony used to play each other in hockey, it was always like, you know what, Anthony was more the goal scorer. I was more the playmaker and the defensive mind and all around type guy. But Anthony was like, okay, let me, let me channel my inner Ovechkin and let me score goals on this team. Meanwhile, I wanted to stop him from doing that, and I wanted to make sure that I hit him every chance that I could. Get. <laughs> so, it, it, but it's good at the end of the day when you can go back and you can have a beer with somebody afterwards. Yeah, yeah, and also your friends can motivate you and drive you to want to do better. Anthony, exactly. Yeah, you know, and like I said, not, uh, to your point, if it's if it's better to be friends or whatnot, and I, I get the point if you don't if you don't like the other player, you know, maybe it gives you. Maybe it gives you extra motivation to to want to be better, but at the same time, these are two highly competitive guys, you know that that have always played at a high level um, and always have been, you know, one of the best in whatever league they've been in. Um, so the fact that they're the fact that they're friends, I don't think that affects that. I think based on being that they're highly competitive, that they're still going to want to be better than the other person, even though they're they're good friends. So. Um, you know, I, I think, like I said, I, I think it's good for both teams. Um, and I also think it's good for the game of hockey overall, you know, overall in New York. It's a storyline that, you know, hopefully you have for kind of, um, you know, many, many years to, to come. And I don't see that changing in any way. I think both guys are, are going to be with their respective teams for a long time. But um, I think this is the first season where it's going to take off. I mean, based on Sorokin's play early in the year, I, I don't see how in good conscience – uh, you know, Trotz could still have Varlamov play the majority of the games, um, you know, because it's undeniable now from what you've seen from him that, you know, he should be the guy. And I think, you know, we are going to see that this year. Um, Here's and, something you know, to that, think about with that. When was the last time two Nor uh, two Vezina finalists came out of the same division? I, well, last yeah. year you had uh, maybe, maybe Marc-Andre Fleury. And uh, Philip Grubauer. Hmm. Yeah, that is true. But um, that is a good. That is a good that. point. Wait. Colorado. Yeah. Colorado. Grubauer and Mark Andre Fleury. Fleury oh, yeah, won right. it. Grubauer was a finalist. Yeah, Grubauer was a finalist, and Fleury won it. And when, yeah. the, when was the last time before that, though? It might be a while before that. Now, on the other hand, I mean, I know when they went to four post lockout. Lundqvist was in there, and Brodeur won it. Brodeur uh, won it in 2007, and Lundqvist was the second runner-up that year. Yeah. Uh, the one that I can't believe – there's two years with Lundqvist, just to say. I can't believe that he wasn't nominated for Vezina or, wasn't a, or didn't win it at all. 2010, he wasn't nominated. He had 10 shutouts, and he carried the team on his back and the microscopic goals against in the month of March. And the other power. one was – uh, 2013, they gave it to Bobrovsky instead of Lundqvist, even though Lundqvist was still carrying the Rangers at that time. Colorado's in the Colorado's in the Central, and Vegas is in the Pacific. Last year, they're in the same division. 
Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah. All right. That, I was going to, that's why I was throwing for <laughs> Lupa first. I'm like, wait a second. They're on the same division. But yeah, so technicality. Yeah. And, and by the way, there are great examples of other friendly rivalries in sports. Larry Bird and Magic Johnson comes to mind. Mm-hmm. And of course, uh, Peyton and Eli. Don't forget, 2006, Peyton won his first Super Bowl. Eli responded by beating the only undefeated team in the Super Bowl that was 18 and 0. Not 17 and 0 because that was the Miami Dolphins. That's I, I do know that I'm a Dolphins fan. So just although I I almost quit on them if they would have gotten Giants to Sean fan. Watson. But yeah, no, I should have stayed a Giant fan. And if uh, I quit the, on the Dolphins, I'll go back to the Giants if I care ah. about football still. But fortunately, hockey's a better sport anyway. <laughs> Guys, if you could think of any other good rivalries, throw it down in the comments below. We're actually going fast and furious today, and. And don't forget to leave us a like as well, because we're going to go Brody. over and do some power rankings. Thank you. Wow. Thank Brody, you very, thank much, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. much. And you know something? We appreciate it. That's why it's another thing to mention. We are doing the first bar meetup. Uh, you can see it coming across the sticker right now. It's going to be hopefully as, uh, as many people as we can jam in there and all to watch the Rangers and the Islanders on November 28th. I would love to do it on the 24th, but that's Thanksgiving Eve. I'm a bartender. I already know what we're in for. Um, But we are anticipating having uh, some, well, obviously some beer specials. Unfortunately, can't do anything on food right now because of economics. If you don't know about it, food prices are all going through the roof. Soon the uh, dollar menu will still be a $5 menu. (laughs) So um, uh, also, but we are going to have some giveaways that day and very likely a 50-50. So can't wait to start seeing you like you guys in person guys girls everyone so come bring it all down and uh come it's gonna be a great time so come on down if you like that video we got a lot more so check out any of these that are right over here and don't forget to like share and subscribe Hmm, your ideas are intriguing to me and i wish to subscribe to your newsletter